All right, let's take a look. What's next? I've saved my Gatlin gun. How are we going to do shocks? Shocks are pretty easy, right? It's just basically two cylinders. So let's set this to, I think, a 15 and a 15. I'm going to set this to a 20. There we go. And uh, I'm not going to taper anything. I'm going to leave it pretty much as is. Um, we don't need an inner radius on this shock. So that's it. We're going to make a poly mesh, select, I'm going to press control shift, pull that guy in, and then I'm just going to go to deformation, size, and I'm going to decrease the size. And then I'll just press shift and move that back. If I want, I can always drag this out, press shift, and then expand it. Now why would it do that? Let's go into our cylinder. Let's redo it. Got my measurements wrong. Make poly mesh. Okay, I'm going to go move, drag this out. Control shift, deformation, decrease the size, move that out, okay, there you go. All right, now let's say we want to have a little nib at the end, some kind of anchor. What tool can we use to add a little anchor in there? Yeah, we could use a ring, so we could actually append something. But now we can start using some of these insert mesh brushes. Like, let's see, is there an insert ring? They may not have included it. There it is. I'm going to click on that center dot. Uh, nice. And this is pretty cool. We're not going to use that right now, but that can be quite useful. I'm going to sync it. Wrong shock, somebody told me. Perspective is off. It's making it look flat. Okay. Voila. Let's go back into draw. I also want, in this particular case, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to come in and I'm going to select curve, try, fill. Perspective is off. And let's do it this way. And what I want to do is just kind of create a some kind of bridged item. Okay. Something like that. Surface, anything else I want to experiment with while I've got you on that. Let's go into stroke. No, let's do this. Okay. There we go. A little harder. So let's go 0.5. I'll illustrate what I'm doing. I just wanted to test it out. You can see I drag out a line, come this way, drag back, and then it automatically closes this part. A little soft edged in there. So what I did was just increase, or I should say decrease, the curve step. Let's go 0.25. And what that means is that there'll be more little dots closer together. 
So whatever I'm doing should technically have a harder edge. Okay, I can delete that and I'm going to use move and just drag that into place. Kind of roughly. Would be nice to get a hole in there. Am I in the same subtool? Yeah. So I'm going to go and use my usual. There we go. Geometry, delete, hidden. So, you know, there's a lot of this back and forth and real simple process uh, that you'll see me doing. Let's drag this out, press shift, drag that out, press shift. Okay. And then I'm going to go stroke and just delete those curves because I get kind of nutty about that. All right. Two different ways to do it. Okay, and there's, like I said, other ways as well. There's a lot of options that you've got for doing stuff like this. We could extract even some of these shapes. Uh, let me check in with you guys real quick. Oops. Okay. Going through the questions, going through the questions. Okay, Thomas had a question. If Dynamesh is best used for organic forms like characters and you have a character with hands, surface elements built in, what's the process for integrating both the organic with the hard surface? Given that you said even using pro project, well, there's a couple, it's not that Dynamesh is best for organic, um, it's that it's best for the base shape. And this is really, this is something Pixelogic, it, they don't say it, but this is something that they kind of, uh, internally they, they stress. Dynamesh is for your basic shape um, for the most part. Now, when it gets into hard surface, things get complicated, and what they really want you to do for hard surface stuff is just start ramping that resolution up. So if you lower this and you start using Dynamesh at 32, you're working with soft forms and you're creating the base mesh. If you raise this, well, you can now start to get past that and you can start doing hard surface stuff. And since we already know that there is another topology option, Z remesher, when we are sculpting hard surface, we don't really care how many polygons there is, except for our, our polygon ceiling. So I'm going to Dynamesh this right now. These are all separate. In fact, let's do this. Uh, I want to do it another way. I'm going to Dynamesh, I'm going to polygroup these guys specifically. So I'm going to go uh, auto group. I want to see these two together. So I select this guy, control shift, click and drag, select that guy. I'm going to polygroup these as the same, control, click, and drag, and polygroup these the same. Then I'm going to go into Geometry, Dynamesh, and Groups is on. So that means that this will be one object and the green will be another object. I'm going to have Project on in a real high resolution and I'm going to Dynamesh. I'm going to let that transfer across the screen for a little bit. So uh, the question that uh, Thomas had was, uh, Dynamesh appears to really be for um, soft form. How are you going to integrate these guys later? Um, it's not just for hard, uh, soft form. You can also use it for hard. You just have to ramp this re re resolution up quite a bit. But it's not a big deal because we already know that we can always get in and Z remesh it. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to stop talking. 
because the computer is going to be taking up a lot of space. And really hone in. It's, this might take a minute, so give it a minute. But I really want to hone in this message that we want to work with one polygon level like this and take it as far as we can. And then let Z remesher do what it does best. So, pretty awesome. We, w we went from, I think, a million polygons down to, what, probably five, yeah, 6,000. We could obviously go a lot lower. Um, but now we've dynameshed this so that they're all together. Now we can do things like put in the welding beads. which you can do with the blob brush. It's a little bit of depth. I'm going to throw depth in there real quick with um, a clay brush and then just pull that up. But there you go. You got a little welding bead in there. Did we have a lazy mouse on? No. Let me show you something. Lazy mouse, and I'm going to increase the step. I'm going to decrease that step. And I'll make it a little bit more mechanical in terms of its edging. Tiny deal, but there you go. Little welding bead. Okay, now we have a shock. I would save this so I can be pulling this in because Lord knows I'm going to need shocks when it comes to this guy. So I'm going to just save this real quick. Shock 01. 